Welcome to Excel 2010 Business Math video number 8. Okay, if you want to download this workbook, 135 Chapter 00, click on the link below the video. Okay, we're on the sheet Cell References. Now, we've actually used, this is our eighth video, we've used Cell References a bunch in formulas already, and we saw how powerful that is. We can change numbers, the, uh, the formula inputs, and then because we're using cell references, the formula updates. But here we want to talk about copying formulas. And there's two types of cell references that we're going to learn in this class. We're going to learn relative cell references and absolute cell references. Let's look at a great example of relative cell references. Here it is. I have a column of quizzes, and I need the average. So I'm going to do just like we did last video, A, V, E, R. And when I see my little drop down with the function I want, I hit Tab. Now, I can look at the screen tip. I could put lots of numbers, but I only want one column. So all I have to do is highlight one column. All right? Now notice, this average function is looking at quiz one. All right? Control Enter. I, I Control Enter puts the thing in the cell. This happens to be a formula and keeps the cell selected. Now I can see the formula up here. Now I want to hit F2. Now I look at this. Notice the blue box. This is called Range Finder. Um, later, when we have lots of different cell references, each uh, cell reference or range of cells will have a different color. But what I want to notice is the position of it. This is a formula. And relative to the formula, it's above it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I think that's 10, right? So 10 cells. Now let's see what happens to this formula when we copy it. Control Enter. Now, we're, we're used to like using um, these buttons up here. Or even Control C for copy and Control V. If we were over in Word or PowerPoint, that's how we'd be doing it. That's how we would be doing it. But here in Excel, there's a special way of copying. Now I'm going to actually use my scroll uh, bar here or my uh, wheel on my mouse to scroll up. I want to make sure you can see this. It's highlighted, but down in the corner, there's a little box. Now that has some formatting, so it's hard to see. Over here, you can see it's better. There's a box, but in always in the right-hand corner is a little teeny box. And that box is called a fill handle. So when I click over here, the fill handle. Now notice this cursor right here is, called, is the selection cursor. It's a big white cross with a black shadow down to the right. Okay, so I select, but watch what happens to the cursor as I move my cursor towards the fill handle. As soon as you see that little crosshair, now Bill Gates called it a crosshair like a gun, but I like to think of it of an ang as an angry rabbit. So instead of crosshair, we'll call it angry rabbit. All right, so when you see your little angry rabbit, that means you're allowed to click. Now this is a left click. You click and drag. Now don't be afraid. When you drag it at first, nothing happens. But when you get to the end of the next cell, you can see that little gray box. And then you drag it again to see the gray box extend. Let go. And what do you think you've done? You've actually copied the formula. So I didn't have to create 1, 2, 3. I created the formula once and then copied it over. Now, I want to click in this cell and hit F2. What happened to those cell references? They moved relative to the formula. So the average function still has this blue box above it. So notice when I hit Tab and then F2, as we copy the formula to the side, the blue box moves. That's called relative cell references. And the reason they say relative is because relative to me, the formula, where am I always going to look? It's not. If we look over here, it's not C6 to C17. It's please always look at the 10 cells above me. Tab. So now I want to prove this to you. It's not C6 to C7. When I hit Tab and F2, notice the C changed to D in both cases. So it's called relative because it moves. It's always looking at the cells above me in essence. Now let's go down here and look at another example. In fact, I'm going to change this up. Well, let's do Alt equals for our auto sum. Notice it says C21 to C27, but it's not really C21 to C27. It's please always add 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, the 7 above me. So when I Control Enter, and I take my cursor and I move towards that little fill handle. When I see my angry rabbit, click and drag. 
I can click in the last cell and hit F2. And sure enough, it wasn't uh, C21 to C27. It was just always add the ones above me. Uh, so the C's change to G's. Anytime there's uh, the cell references are changing as you're copying the formula, you know you have relative cell references. Now let's uh, do something different. I'm going to say uh, product, uh, PRO for product space 1, control enter. Now a cool thing in Excel, let me add a border here. Now a cool thing in Excel is if you copy a formula, right, with the fill handle, it copies a formula. But if you have a word and a number like this, it'll actually increment. Uh, so I can click and drag. Notice I'm using that same uh, fill handle and angry rabbit. But now I'm going to get uh, that. In fact, let me show you here, too. When you type J-A-N, uh, there's all sorts of tricks. This little, this little fill handle and the angry rabbit do. Click and drag, and it knows to do the months. Actually, let's just check this out, Mon Monday. What do you think we do if we point to the fill handle with our angry rabbit? Um, it could be spelled out. It works with months. It works with all sorts of things. All right, now I'm going to actually uh, move that. Here's a little trick. See if I point to the edge uh, right here and I click and drag, it moves it. So that was on the edge. That actually can be get people in trouble sometimes. Sometimes they're trying to get to the fill handle and they accidentally go like this. Uh, that moves it. But in this case, I wanted to move it. Now, I want to do a total column over here to show you another type of relative cell reference. Alt equals for some. Notice it's pretty smart. It knows to go up or down. That's why you always have to verify that it's correct, because sometimes it doesn't guess right. But notice, this is not C21 to G21. It's please add one, two, three, four, five cells to my left. Control Enter. And now I'm going to drag this down. Now notice that little um, fence means the column is not wide enough, so I click and drag. Now I'm going to click here and F2. Notice it worked perfectly. The relative cell references move. So each, as I copied the formula down, each time it moved. Now let me show you another trick. I'm going to Control Z, Control Z. That undid uh, the action, and then I'm going to make the column a little bit wider. Now watch this. This is another cool trick for the fill handle and the angry rabbit. Notice there's something to the left. Well, I want to copy this down, so if I double click the fill handle with my angry rabbit it'll automatically copy it down now it didn't it stopped because there was a formula there so I actually have to copy it down one more all right relative cell references now we need to look at absolute cell references here's our situation we have a tax rate and some names and some gross pay and I need to calculate each one of these gross pays times the tax rate so this is a deduction even if you've never done this calculation, we'll do this calculation, I think, in Chapter 5 is payroll. Um, we all know what a deduction is. They take some of it for a tax. So I'm going to make a formula equals, and then Joe's gross pay times uh, the tax rate. I'm going to hit Enter. Equals Chin's pay times the tax rate. Enter. Equals one cell to my left, notice as I go down here, I'm always looking one cell to my left. So you should always suspect that we could put a formula up here and copy it down, and it would always look one cell to the left. But watch this, times, I'm always clicking on G35, equals one cell to my left times G35, equals one cell to my left times G35. Now, let's go ahead and delete these. You notice G25, uh, G25 was used every time. Let's just put this in edit mode F2 and look at it. Well, let's try it. Let's copy it down. Double click and send it down. Oh, well, that didn't work. Well, of course it didn't work because there are relative cell references. If I hit F2 here, it obeyed me perfectly. This cell reference up here is looking one cell to my left times one, two, three cells to my uh, right, right? So when I look down here, it's exactly correct. 
one cell to my left, one, two, three cells to my right. So if there were a, were a way, and I'm going to delete these, come up here in F2, if there were a way to lock G35, it would make our life easier. Because when we get to chapters, chapter 5, you know, we're going to have huge payroll problems where we have to make all these individual calculations. But if we could build a formula with one relative cell reference and one locked, we could just copy it down. No problem. You've got to use the F4 key. And I don't see that I have uh, a note about this. The um, And this is a good note. This is a keyboard shortcut um, that we'll use basically throughout the entire book. If your cursor is touching the cell reference, use F4 key to lock cell reference. OK, so that's kind of off to the side there. You can see that. All right, so here, F2. And just if is, whoops, I hit F1 there. That's help. So as long as your cursor is touching part of G35, my, it happens to be at the end, I'd hit the F4 key. And what does it do? It puts in the secret code necessary to tell the cell reference that the column and the row is locked. Now, this dollar sign is arbitrary. They picked it back in the beginning of spreadsheet history. They had to pick some character, so they picked a dollar sign. What that means is when we copy it, this one will be relative because there's no dollar signs. This one will be absolute or locked because there's dollar signs. Control Enter. Double click and send it down. Notice that double click works perfectly here because we only have raw data uh, formula inputs to the side. I click here, and when you're you're in charge of making sure all the formulas are right, you go to the last one and check it. Hit F2. Is that correct? One cell to my left times G35. I still remember when I first learned cell references like this. I just went, you got to be kidding me. You know, I remember doing each one of these calculations on a calculator, typing it out. Oh, it was horrible. All right, let's look at another example, our last example for absolute. Uh, in chapter 3, we'll talk about um, parts compared to the whole. This example should make sense to you, because how a percentage grade is calculated is you take how many points you got in the class compared to the total number possible. So in this class, 500 are possible this hypothetical class here. And we have to do division for each one of those. So we have to take this divided by 500. This divided by 500 equals one cell to my left divided by the 500 in C43. Equ Enter equals one cell to my left divided by C43. Equals one cell to my left divided by C43. So the pattern is always one cell to my left, but somehow I need to lock that cell reference. All right? So I come up here, I delete all this. Here's how you do it. When you get the hang of it, this is how you'll be doing it. Equals one cell to the left, divided by, and you click on cell C43. As long as it's the cell you want to lock, hit F4. That's it. Control Enter. Double click and send it down. Now notice Control Z, that fill handle and that angry rabbit, when you have columns of data like this, and in lots of uh, chapters will have data like this, double click and it sends it down. It knows to stop because it finds a blank here, and so it stops when the last piece of data. Now remember, you always go to the bottom, hit F2, and verify. Because it's not the numbers you check. It's the formula. Is the formula the correct formula? All right, so relative and absolute, huge, huge time savers in Excel. All right, we'll see you for our last video. It'll be kind of a, a wrap up for this uh, first week one, chapter 00. See you next video.